three held over Sabah boat capsize. Thousands protest Trump travel ban. Hi, I'm Daniel Abakri with Cup of News. Rescuers have expanded their search for four Chinese tourists and a Malaysian crewman after their boat sank in rough seas off Sabah, as police detained the boat owner and two others for suspected negligence. The sinking of the catamaran carrying 27 Chinese tourists and three crew members on the first day of the Chinese New Year sparked a major air and sea search covering some 400 nautical square miles. Royal Malaysia Navy Chief Admiral Tan Sri Ahmad Kamarul Zaman Ahmad Badrudin tweeted on Monday that the search area is now 1,500 nautical square miles. Around 100 officers from the MMEA, Navy and Air Force are involved in the mission as well as a C-130 aircraft. Part of the search area falls in Brunei waters and authorities there are using a helicopter to hunt for the missing six. Yeah, we definitely under IMSA, this is international. Yeah, uh, International Aeronautical and Maritime Organization uh, search and rescue operation is everybody business to support each other. The boat left from Tanjung Aru for Pulau Mangalum at 9 a.m. on Saturday for what was supposed to have been a two-hour journey. But the boat owner reported it missing some 12 hours later. The skipper and a crew member were found alive on Sunday morning off Pulau Tiga before the discovery of 20 tourists, three of whom did not survive the 32-hour ordeal at sea. They arrived in Kota Kinabalu early on Monday and were taken to hospital. China's Consul General in Sabah, Chen Peijie, urged the Malaysian authorities to boost rescue efforts. In the meantime, the skipper, crew member and boat owner have been detained to assist investigations. The authorities were also investigating whether the boat should have been used as a tourist vessel. According to the skipper, the boat had broken after being hit by strong waves and sank. All the tourists were tied together and carried away by the currents. Separately, the bodies of two teenage boys were found in a car in Kampung Panjor, Kumumin, early on Monday. Kota Baru Police Deputy Chief Superintendent Satapa Yusuf said passers-by spotted the bodies, one lying on the front seat and the other on the back seat of a Perdua Kalisa at 5.55 a.m. The boys, both aged 18, were identified as Mohammed Shahrul Nizam Hasbullah of Kampung Gertak Sagu and Nick Mohammed Hafiz Nick Zamzam of Kampung Panchor. Setapa said a preliminary investigation revealed no injuries on the bodies and the case has been classified as sudden death. Meanwhile, a good Samaritan in Kampung Sangang Sabarang Tamulo has been using his four-wheel drive as a mode of transport for flood victims. He even chauffeured a bride and her family members to her wedding reception. Uh, sebuah lori uh, siap dengan apa uh, keluarga pengantin di atas tu sedang dalam perjalanan untuk meredah air pergi uh, jadi kalau kita tengok rumah tinggal air jadi kami sedang meredah air untuk apa uh, majlis uh, perkahwinan pada malam ni jadi di sini kita ada pengantin kita naik pajero dan mungkin mak dia dan mungkin kakak dia Borhan also owns a boat and recorded a video of him delivering food to a cat left stranded by the floods. 
Thousands of people rallied in U.S. cities over President Donald Trump's order restricting entry into the country for travelers from seven Muslim-majority countries. Our reporter Desiree Gasper spoke earlier to Malaysian freelance journalist Zan Azli, who's currently in Los Angeles attending a workshop. Well, currently uh, live on the news is uh, that there, there, are, there are protests going on at the Los Angeles uh, International Airport right now. Uh, and and uh, a lot of the news is, yeah, they're covering it live right now. Uh, and they have uh, families who have been detained, they are being released right now and being interviewed on TV. Okay, what are people saying about Trump's ban? Some of the locals that I have spoken to says that uh, uh, this is not how, they're very upset. Uh, I mean, they're very upset. Uh, and we're in Los Angeles, and we know Los Angeles was, uh, the California is, uh, was a country that did not vote for Trump. Lah. Uh, and and uh, the the few people that I have spoken to here, they have uh, expressed a lot of anger. Uh, the first person I met at the airport said that this this, this doesn't show the spirit of uh, the country, uh, and you know because the country is based on immigrants actually, uh, and so so uh, uh, he says this this is this is something that they're very angry with. Uh, another person uh, that I spoke to today was in the streets. Uh, they actually this this person actually came up to me and ask if we are if I'm a registered voter and how I felt about you know about the politics in the US and I said no 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 I'm Malaysian uh, and I said uh, uh, but we do know the situation and she was shouting expletives towards Donald Trump <laughs> I see so people are angry it's mm. not that you know yes. that a majority there are in favor of this ban no 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 you, you can see people holding signs against the ban uh, people are collect collecting donations to be uh, donated to ACLU. Visually uh, present, uh, the, 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 the anger towards the ban. Are you nervous at all that the, the ban may include other countries soon? Uh, no, other no, no, no. I, 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 yeah, uh, no, I don't, I don't feel nervous. Uh, and I, I don't think that it will include any other countries. I, I, I can't really assume. Uh, but no, as... As, as a Malaysian citizen who's here, I don't, I don't, feel, I don't feel like my, my situation is threatened in any way. Zan added that he did not face any problem entering the US with his Malaysian passport. He also said a large number of lawyers were waiting at the Los Angeles International Airport to help travellers with valid visas or refugee status who get detained in transit or at US airports. In the meantime, Indonesia, which is not among Trump's targeted list of seven Muslim-majority countries, held deep regrets about the immigration clampdown. Walaupun uh, kebijakan yang diambil oleh suatu negara merupakan hak daulat, kedaulatan masing-masing negara tersebut, termasuk kebijakan yang terakhir diambil oleh Amerika Serikat, namun uh, kita tetap uh, prihatin ya, uh, terhadap kebijakan yang terakhir uh, hal ini mengingat bahwa upaya tersebut uh, dapat uh, bertentangan dengan upaya global untuk memerangi uh, terorisme dan juga mengatasi masalah pengungsi. The ban suspends the arrival of all refugees for at least 120 days, Syrian refugees indefinitely, and bars citizens from Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen for 90 days. Meanwhile, politics took center stage at the Screen Actor Guild Awards as many stars delivered fiery speeches to directly or indirectly criticize Trump's immigration ban on Muslim travelers. Good evening, fellow SAG-AFTRA members and everyone at home and everyone in airports that belong in my America. We're in a really tricky time in the world, in our country, and things are very inexcusable and scary and need action. And I'm so grateful to be part of a group of people that cares and that wants to reflect things back to society. Hidden the night's top prize went to Hidden Figures, the true story of three black female mathematicians during the 1960s space race, which ousted Manchester by the sea and moonlight. The SAG nominations are the second major announcement in Tinseltown's glittering awards season, which climaxes with the Academy Awards on February 26th. In other news, six people died and eight were injured after gunmen opened fire at a Quebec City mosque, a shooting that Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau condemned Monday as a terrorist attack. Two suspects were arrested while police did not rule out the possibility of a third suspect who had fled the scene. 
The attack comes as Canada vowed to open its arms wide to Muslims and refugees following Trump's controversial immigration ban. The ethnic Kham village of Gantuan in southwest China hosted a ceremony on the second day of the Chinese New Year for women who were married in the past year. The festival holds a bloody match where village men compete to rip off parts of live poultry from poles held by brides. It symbolizes an apology by the women for marrying outside the family. The tradition has existed for over 500 years. Roger Federer celebrated his fairy tale victory and his 18th Grand Slam title at the Australian Open in Melbourne on Monday. The Swiss champion won his first Grand Slam title in five years, overcoming Rafael Nadal in a five set final. It really made it emotional when I heard that in Switzerland people were following me and I saw uh, people just being generally really happy for me that I want to slam again and, and particularly this one maybe it's a, it's a bit of a fairy tale, you know, after the comeback, to come back this way. Federer entered the event after nearly six months away to recover from a knee injury and climbed to 10th in the rankings with his win. France, France won its first Miss Universe crown in 64 years on Monday. Iris Mitena, a dental surgery student from Lille, beat 85 of the world's most beautiful women at the event hosted by the Philippines. Miss Haiti, Raquel Pellissier, is the first runner-up, while Miss Colombia, Andrea Tovar, was declared second runner-up. And that's all we have for today, folks. Good night.